Welcome to the Virtual Antics, your go-to podcast for digital entrepreneurs powered by Nadora.org and NG Virtual Assistant. We're here to guide you through every aspect of business from networking to lead generation and so much more. Get ready to thrive in the virtual world with expert insights and our all-in-one solution, Nadora, where creating a digital business becomes a breeze. Let's dive in and revolutionize your business journey together. Welcome back to the Virtually Antics Podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Guzman, and today I have another fabulous guest with us. I have Miss Rhonda Parker, and she is an amazing author. Her story is one of unwavering determination, and she has fear- fearlessly pursued her dreams in the face of numer- numerous challenges and adversity. Welcome, Rhonda. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I can't wait to engage with you and your audience and really have little nuggets of things that, you know, can inspire us to be the best version of ourselves. Yeah, I'm so excited that you're here. And I absolutely love your book. You have, um, you're the author of Cross uh, Crossroads, which is a fictional novel, correct? That is correct. So Crossroads is fiction, but um, I'm also known for my academic writing. And so I kind of try to put those together. Um, when I say together, it's definitely a suspense thriller, um, but it also has little lessons learned as you go through the who done it, what happened, why did it happen, but then what can we learn as as the reader or the audience about our own lives that could put, place us potentially in these same ad- adversities. That is amazing. That's one of my favorite things about reading. I'm an avid reader myself. I read at least a book a day. I'm a speed reader, actually. And I love it because, like you said, you put yourself into a different world, but then you are also learning things that relate to your own life. That is really cool. So how'd you get started? Where'd your passion for writing come from? Well, you know, I would never have thought I was going to be a writer, believe it or not. I started out in business. Um, I went to college, I got my BSM, my MBA, and my doctorate in management, and I was working in the soft skills of, you know, HR, education, um, and I I started writing then, and then I realized that you could really explore not only your own personal um, life and emotions, et cetera, but you can, you can really create a world all of your own. Like you said, you're going someplace else, so... I started Crossroads to show I could do it. You know, at first it wasn't about publishing or becoming a bestseller author or anything. It was about, let's get this story out. Let's engage in these characters and create this this world. So I picked some area, uh, area that I know, Indianapolis. And what I was inspired by is I was really active in um, community service and I saw the injustices in the legal system and and you know many of us have been called a jury duty but we don't have you know we don't have the ins and outs of what really goes on in the legal system so if you're in a jury you find out that hey this is a whole new world than what we expect And so I started with that premise, but then the characters just took over. You know, they, you know, what I thought was the ending was going to be, yes, it was the ending, but it ended up being a whole lot more in the process. Oh, that is really cool. And I love that. I love the natural flow that I've interviewed a couple of authors and I love that they talk about how, you know, you start writing and, you know, you think you have an ending sometimes or sometimes don't plan it at all. And the characters just kind of create the story itself. That is really, really cool. And that's kind of like how we are in real life, right? We all have our own stories. We don't know the ending. It just right. kind of, we, every single decision brings on us to a new path. I think that's really, really interesting. So did you learn anything about yourself or have any, um, you know, like, re- re- I can't speak today, man. Did, that's you okay. have any, did you learn anything like new about yourself maybe while you're writing Crossroads? Well, you know, I think one per- persistence, you know, the importance of just every day, you know, spending at least one page a day. If I spent one page a day, I have a novel in a year. You know, so a lot of times people think that, oh my goodness, I got to sit down and I got to power through it. No, if you just do one page a day, then you have, you know, you're done in a year. So that was the first thing. But the, about myself, what I learned and it, it kind of surprised me is some of the things that I had been taught in my life, I I questioned and then I came out with 
you know, this person was right when they gave me this piece of mentoring. So for instance, um, the core, I'm from the Midwest, I'm from Indiana. So the core value for blue collar um, workers is work is your core. So here I took the main character who had a work ethic, like, you know, like unbelievable type A personality and had her go in there and she's got jury duty. And then she realized she had to question that core value because it was when you have too many things going on in your life and you're dedicated to work so much, you are giving up a, a, another part of, of your life you know, when you're working that much. And many of us, especially in today's world, the inflation's high and we're, you know, we've, you know, we've got social media everywhere that engages us to buy, 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 or be prettier or faster or stronger. And, you know, we're constantly being bombarded that to, you know, to be better and strive for more. But sometimes those goals are good, but you can't let it, and balance you. So like, you know, I found out it through this that not only was my character imbalanced by keeping that core value, but maybe I needed to evaluate it too. Mm -hmm. And so there was little nuggets like that. And then I learned to appreciate some of the things my father said, do not compare yourself to others. Yeah. And a lot of times we compare because we want to strive to be like them. That's not a negative outcome, but then it comes to envy sometimes maybe they have a bigger house maybe they have the promotion you wanted maybe you know they're getting along better with your boss or you know whatever those envies are and in in that writing process it's, it started developing and I start, started saying well what do different philosophers say about envy and what do different um religions say about envy and I found the perfect um, premise of what we need to consider. And that is anger is cruel. And yes, we do get angry at people and that is cruel and we can act out on that. Fury is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Envy makes the bones rot. And right then I was like, okay, we know what these people are going through. You know, the, the tension is coming from all of those, um, those emotions and so it kind of evolved and I learned about myself do not compare I thought of all the times my dad would say because there's five of us kids don't compare yourself of course I was the, the baby girl so I was always comparing myself it robs you from you and what your intended purpose is and so I found that wow this is it, it wasn't self-reflection even though it was a fiction you know it was self-reflection of what society has for us and, and offers us if we do not monitor and use emotional intelligence for ourselves. Yeah, that's a really good point. And then one of the things that you said in the very beginning was that you have, you set a goal, right? So like every day, you know, you'd write so much. And I think that's really important, especially when you're a business owner and um, because you have so much going on. And so really mm -hmm. one defining your goals. So you kind of said, Hey, I want to have this book done within a year. So I need to write so many pages. And I was like, Oh, that's amazing. And that's what we have to do as business owners, right? Is like, we have to say, what do we truly want out of our business? What does it look like a year from now? What do you have to take to get there? What are the steps to do this within that time frame? Um, how much do you have to spend? Do you have to hire people? Do you have to um, set time on your schedule to complete it? And then just making sure that you are sticking to that every day. And that takes a lot. That's a lot harder than it sounds. Because when you say it out loud, it sounds really easy, right? But to right. have the willpower to actually follow through with that every and day, the, that's amazing. The commitment, yeah. you know, so like, um, I, I come up with little slogans for myself, even in, in my marketing, you know, I know a lot of your, your audience are, are marketing and are considering marketing and looking for little tools. Okay. For your social media. So effort, you know, the publisher does a certain amount and you, you know, have to do a certain amount of pushing and you have to look at it and say, what's the big picture. So I have like, you know, Monday is review Monday. So maybe I post a review or, Tuesday might be what I call push, which means it's just my my following. And maybe Wednesday might be poll, which means I, you know, in groups, you know, you know, 
engaging in groups to 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 continually better my brand. Yeah. So even though I'm already an entrepreneur and have my own business consulting, mentoring, um, the book is a whole different business, really. You have to look at it as a business every day. And a lot of times as authors, I think um, people start saying, well, I wrote the book now, somebody buy it. And then they want to know why it's not getting bought. Well, you only have so many friends and family. Yeah. So you have to think of engaging ways to get your message and your brand and you're out there. So it might be a great book. You know, when when you're going to conferences, they say some of the best novels are in people's closets. Mm -hmm. And that's because they've written them, but they haven't gotten them out there like they need to be. So when you decide that you're done with the product, because a book is a product, it's an art but it's a product too. This is, you know, this is, you know, once you get the cover done and you've designed it and everything else, it's like, okay, what does this product stand for? So for me, I said, okay, well, it's a fiction novel, but I also have, you know, um, a decade or two decades worth of experience in teaching and education at the higher education level. So I'm like, okay, so for every fiction novel, that there'll be a self-help that goes with it. Mm -hmm. So that people that identify, wait a minute, I'm out of balance. I need life. I've done this with my students a hundred times, you know, go through the process of defining your goals. Okay, so let's create the self-help book. So that's going to come out in probably early um, December. And then you just, that's my brain, my, what my brain is. So then book two is part of the series of, of Crossroads book one. And you just keep on building yourself. But if you don't look at yourself and your product, you never can get it out there. And especially in today's social media, you either have to do it yourself and learn all those software programs, or you have to hire someone, someone like, you know, you or, you know, maybe one of the other business, um, you know, the analytic um, people that can help you, Google, um, Amazon, somebody's got to help you get distribute, distribute that product. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's definitely possible, you know, just writing down, all your different goals, what direction, write the to-dos. And then I always say you either keep it for yourself and delegate it, or it might not be a task that you need to do at all. You might be able to automate it. So um, yeah, that's definitely my my go-to process for making sure that all to do all the to-dos get completed, but also that your time is really valuable. So you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're only doing the tasks that, you know, are boss worthy. So Awesome. Well, it was so nice to have you on the show. Where can we find you? Where can we get Crossroads? Shere. So um you can find me at rondaparkertaylor.com. That's my website. Uh, Rhonda's spelled with an R uh, H instead of just R O. And all of my social medias are the same. Crossroads um is a suspense novel. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, BAM, any of the major retailers, and then it is in select stores. Um, the one thing that um, we hadn't talked about is the importance of, of um, getting them in the right hands. Crossroads is um, endorsed by Merrill Hemingway, um, the Golden Globe um, and Academy Award winning actress and the granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway. She has a book club. So she has written the foreword and she also did a YouTube video for it. And I think that uh, the message that I would say is explore if you're out there and you're listening, explore your options, explore what social media influencers, et cetera, can do for you and re realize that, you know what, you have it to be whatever you want to. In this case, it ended up being a bestseller for me and um, for you, for for you, for somebody else, it might be that, you know, their product takes off. Use the tools. Um, so RhondaParkerTaylor.com and um, enjoy your life and do the best that you can every day and be blessed. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rhonda. I'll make sure I put those links in the show notes as well. And we'll see you guys next time on the Virtual Antics Podcast. <laughs>